Hey there, Lisa and I wanted to give you a shameless plug to encourage you, to encourage all your teachers to come to some special trainings this summer. We highlighted this training the other day at a after school tablets, laptops, and cell phones, oh my, training about BYOD. And we wanted to share that a little bit of it with you today. So did you ever think about it? Are you okay with not being the smartest person in the room? Look around, there's somebody smarter than you. Are you okay with that? Most kids know more about technology than we do. Most kids can operate things at a young age. I have an 18 month old grandson who called me the other day. He said, Nana Flick, Nana Flick. I said, what is he talking about? My daughter got on the phone and said, he needs the password to Netflix so he can watch his show. He's 18 months old. We need to tell our teachers that you are not the device expert. You are the teaching expert. We all went to school to become teachers. We don't have to worry about the devices. The kids can actually run the devices. They don't need us for that. It's not about the cool tools or the technology. It's about the content. Our job is to convey to them the content. The tools, the cool tools, They'll come out every day. There'll be something brand new. There's even a show that's called Cool Tools that shows you all the cool things that are out there. So it's not about the technology. It's about the content. Will using the technology enhance the lessons and engage the students? That's what we're trying to show. It's all about engaging the students, pushing them, driving them to want to know more. We are going to show you some cool tools, but you have to decide how will it enhance, engage, and motivate the creativity of your students. BYOD, bring your own device. Using technology to enhance innovative teaching. Will this mean everything will change in the classroom? No. BYOD will give the students and the teachers the opportunity to participate and demonstrate learning by using devices they're familiar with. Well, why do we even care? Well, it's been proven. Devices work. 80% of the people will access the internet for mobile devices. I love the third one down there. 70% of children ages two to five can use a computer mouse, but only 11% of them can tie their shoe. That's what our job is. Our job is about the content. It's not about teaching the devices. Do the devices help? Sometimes. Do they encourage them? Maybe. Do they spark their interest? I would say probably. But our job, remember, is about the content. What can devices be used for in the classroom? Here they are. Critical thinking and research. Questioning and quiz responses. Communication, collaboration, differentiation, and creativity. And I'm sure you can think of a lot more, because we could too. Here's an example of what it can look like in a classroom. Today my students were discussing alternative ways of generating electricity and the internal ring of students was having a conversation with each other while the outside ring of students was having discussion on a website called Today's Meet. Students can write comments and see a scrolling list of other comments and they could respond to other comments or question other students about their statements or have a full discussion. In a traditional Socratic seminar, the outside students may be taking notes or writing down thoughts that they have. Um, being able to have the technology, they could actually have a full conversation and interact with other students um, without disturbing the inside ring and letting them have their own conversation. Uh, we basically had twice as much conversation and twice as much learning going on as opposed to having half the class just watching and um, observing. I've been really surprised with the feedback from students with today's meet because it allows students who would be shy or not willing to participate otherwise um, since they're not having to raise their hand or speak out, I find that students are much more willing to have that conversation. So it engages a larger percentage of my class. 
one technology, did you hear it, engages a larger percent of his class. So that's just one example, today's meet. You can get together, you can use it all the time in, when you're having faculty meetings. Using a back channel encourages active participation by all the students. It also encourages active participation at faculty meetings when you can ask a question and right then and there instead of having to wait till the end. Now, what's a device? What's an authorized device? Well, it's easier to answer the question, what's not a device? What's not an authorized device? If the main function is for personal gaming or personal music, then it's not a device. If it's all about me, what I'm going to do with it, instead of the learning that's gonna take place in the classroom, then it's not a device. However, keep that in mind. It's not limited. PE teacher says we're gonna go out and run two miles. Hey, bring your music if you want to so that you can listen to it. So the device for that day may be a music player. But it's not a personal music player because the teacher has suggested that it happen. Now we need to talk a little bit about how this is going to change in your school. You've really got to work on technology management in the classroom. You have to make some decisions about things and how they're going to work in the classroom. You'll see in the room we have some examples of some different posters that can work. Here's an example that could work in elementary, middle, or high school. I used it in my classroom and I taught middle school. It can be posted throughout the classrooms and the hallways and the teachers have to get used to using it. It's a simple stoplight idea. Red light means that the devices are off. Now how it worked in my classroom is when we sat down the first thing, everybody held their device up. And I'd say, devices up, corner and present. And they would take their devices and stick them in the corner of their desk, face up. If it was on red, that meant we were having a test probably that day or something else was going on that we couldn't use the devices. So that meant the devices had to be off, not on silent, but actually off. And they had to be face up. Why face up? Well, because that way you know what's going on with the device. The next one, yellow. This happened a lot of times when we were doing an activity that I was introducing them to something. And we didn't necessarily want them totally engaged in their device, but there was a possibility that we were going to use their device. For example, if I was teaching an algebra class and all of a sudden we were talking about the slope of the line and I said, so what does that actually mean? What does slope of the line mean? I'd say, we're on yellow. Turn, get your device. Everybody look it up. So then they'd start to look up the word slope and we would have conversations about all the different definitions that were there and narrow it down to what it meant in our content. It's teaching the content using the device. Green. That means you can use the device at will, but you have to stay on task and you have to use it for schoolwork. It has to remain on silent and vibrate. This is when you're doing a group activity or you might be doing research or the kids might be producing some product, but it's actively being used, whatever device it is that they have. Campus conversations. You have to have these conversations with your teachers and with your leadership team. You have to make some decisions about what we call no-no zones. No-no zones are those places where having a device can get you in trouble. What am I talking about? Having a device out in a restroom, having a device out in a locker room, having a device when it's going to be a situation that it wouldn't be appropriate. Those are what we call no-no zones. A no-no zone might also be in an area where the computer labs are and you don't want to have a mixing of them. The other thing that you need to talk about is power stations. It's not a good idea, nor would I suggest, that you have power stations located in the back of the room. The devices belong to the students. They shouldn't be out of the student's hands. You should never ask a student to give their device to another student. It belongs to them. And with that comes the idea that if you're sending the kids to the back of the room to leave their device back there to charge, then that device is out of their hands and you have told them to take it to the back of the room. You have to think about that. Where are the kids going to charge it? We've seen a lot of different examples where they said of charging stations in libraries and hallways and cafeterias. But again, think about the fact that we do not want the kids to leave their devices alone at any time. And then classroom expectations. 
teachers have to set the limits and the expectations and they have to be consistent. That's why the stoplights work great. If everybody in the school is doing it, then all of the kids know what the colors mean. Now we're gonna talk about the five C's of innovative education. Critical thinking, character, communication, creativity, and collaboration. What does this look like with technology? Well, critical thinking. Asking questions that require more than a Google search to answer. Google is not the holy grail. We have an example of using Padlet. I don't know if you've ever seen Padlet. Padlet used to be called the wall wisher. But here's an example. You put it out there, the kids go to it, and here's my question. The Six Flags Corporation has um, approached Forney Zoning Commission to use 24 acres to build a water park. What environmental impact would building the park have on the area? So the kids would just double click on, on here. They would post their name. And so say Keith answered this question. Keith could say that the runoff may cause flooding. Keith is a brilliant scientist. He knows that. So this is an example of how it can be used. All the kids can brainstorm. It's like electronically gallery walking. The next one is character. Digital footprints. This is extremely important. Kids do not understand that a digital footprint is the data trail left by the interactions in a digital environment. This is extremely important for them to understand. There are many, many different video clips that are out there. Here's one that I suggest. It's the digital footprint. It's fabulous. It really lets kids know about what's left behind. Here's another thing, another C, communication. Okay, communication. And a pre primo example here. I text you, I tweeted you, I saw that you were on Facebook but it can be used in a lot of different ways. Introduce your class lesson using evoking. Use Remind 101 to let parents and kids know of what's happening in the future. Communication using technology and creativity. This is an example of um, some third graders that were learning about habitats and animals. And so they created a video that told about their animals that they learned about. Hello, I'm here with Marvin the Bright Owl in Montreal, Canada, at Marvin's favorite lake. What's your habitat like, Marvin? I live in the forest close to freshwater ponds and marshes in North America because I like to eat frogs, fish, snakes, and insects. Adorable, wasn't it? Okay, so what about collaboration? Well, we all use collaboration. There's lots of ways to use collaboration. So Veronica, if you didn't know where Texas was, how would you find out? Google it. If you didn't know what photosynthesis was, how would you find out? Google Jamie, it. if you wanted to find out how to drive to Whitesboro, how would you do it? Google. If you wanted to find out where was the best place to plant roses, how would you find out? Oh, I'd Google it. If you wanted to find out who invented the laptop computer, how would you find out? Uh, Google it. If you wanted to find out who won the Masters Golf Tournament in 1972, how would you find it? Google if it. you wanted to find out who won the football state champion in 1968, how would you find it? Google it. If you wanted to make a document and share it with the rest of the teachers in the science department, what would you do? Use Google. If you wanted to make a form that we all had to share, what would you do? Use Google. If you and your teachers wanted to edit a test together, but you're in separate places, how could you do it? Use Google. If there was one training that you thought teachers should attend, what would it be? I'd go to Google Training. Okay, that was our shameless plug. Send all your teachers to Google Training. Why? Well, because they're going to learn all these cool tools. They're going to learn how you can use Google to share documents. They're going to learn how to use Google to do assessments and rubrics. It's important that we encourage them to get the training now. They'll also learn, they could also go to training and learn about Socrative, an easy online tool for giving assessments, and they can even play a game while they're learning the assessments. 
So if you need more information, let us know. Or check out Lisa's Live Binder on the Symbaloo page. It's a wealth of information.